when a white woman is with a white man, she know who's boss. So if she wants to be a boss, she got to get the black man. He's the only man she can have with. She know she can have her way with him. And if she don't get it with his consent, she'll get it through the legal system, i.e. Jonathan Majors. Uh. Because whoever a woman lays with, he will leave fingerprints in her vagina. Mm. not physical spiritual yeah. yeah and a reason a big reason why a lot of our black women are so unhealthy psychologically and so unhappy spiritually is because they have the energy of multiple men swimming in their uterus mm. before most women that i know before they truly consider go into another country to get a black man the first thing they do is locally just dating outside their race mm. locally that's what they consider. And I just seen your whole facial and expression. Yeah. A lot of coaches and advise seen, that too. And a, lo if, if a lot of people. If you can't find connection with black men, mm -hmm. then you should go out and, and try something a little different. I want my sisters to be careful. And the reason I want my sisters to be careful, being who I am, I get a lot of stories from a lot of black women. <clears throat> I've had black women tell me they were engaged or married to white men for years, even with children, only for him to turn around and call her the N-word call her a black tell her she'll never be as good as a white woman you understand because remember all white people have that in them just because they haven't sex with you i don't know where we get this idea that if a white person beds you that means they're somehow different from any other white person didn't thomas jefferson bed half the plantation didn't george washington bed half the plantation so where do we get this idea that if a white person is sexing you they're somehow not racist they just as racist. I had one sister send me an email. She said, Dr. Umar, my white boyfriend calls me the N-word when we're having sex. What? Yes. Wow. In fact, she called in on one of my lives and discussed it. Yeah. He calls her the N-word when they're having sex. And she wanted me to know if I felt that was acceptable. I can't believe she could. Yes. Yes. Wow. Because you got to remember, in white culture, the men believe you never really had sex unless you've been with a jungle woman, i.e. our sisters. So all white men want to access the black vagina because it's the best vagina in existence. But they only accessing it, you know, as, as, as a fetish. See, white people fetishize us. And we so in love with whiteness and we're so in love with accessing whiteness and proximity to whiteness. We don't even realize when we're being paraded around like zoo monkeys. Mm. White women fetishize black men. And the reason why they love having a black man is in a relationship with a white man. She know who's boss. Mm. When a white woman is with a white man, she know who's boss. So if she wants to be a boss, she got to get the black man. He's the only man she can have with. She know she can have her way with him. And if she don't get it with his consent, she'll get it through the legal system, i.e. Jonathan Majors. Uh, hmm. I can destroy your black ass whenever I feel like it. Yeah, you could be worth a uh, billion dollars, Bill Cosby. But what's going to happen when I tell the courts you sexually harassed me 40 years ago? See, the white woman loves the black man because she's always in the driver's seat of the relationship. She got the whole force of the white power structure behind her if he gets out of line. Never considered that. That is. Wow. And honestly, I think that's why internally I've always been shook. Like I've, I, I haven't been able to truly date a white woman at all. Like I, it's, it's fear built into me. I mean, oh, all yeah. throughout my childhood, you know, I grew up learning cases on Emmett Till you know, growing up, that was put into me early. So I already knew what the situation was. You do think about, I mean, you think about, you know, when you see the police, you think about when you see a group of man. white men. Or I even think about with the black woman. Oh yeah. It's going to be thinking about me while I'm with them. You just, you just out there, unprotected. I, absolutely. I don't date women who have had sex with non-African men. Even if it was just an experience? Yes. Wow. Wow. If they sex them, a date, I can live with that. A kiss, disgusting, but I might swallow it. <laughs> oh my God. But if she gave, if she gave that honeycomb hideout to a, if she gave her cookies to that Caucasian slayer, I cannot go back into that cave 
after she let a Neanderthal enter it. I cannot do it. She has disrespected her vagina and every female ancestor we've ever had. I cannot do wow. it. Wow. Strong words from Dr. Johnson. I want to ask you this too. While people are coming in here, I, I really want to know this because if I had to make it very plain mm -hmm. and say, is it better for a black woman in particular, because that's who we're speaking about, to be alone mm -hmm. or to marry outside her race? Mm -hmm. What should she decide to do? Why are those the only two options? Why could she not find a brother on another continent or consider plural marriage? And going back to the hypocrisy of the radical black feminists who say they cannot be part of a plural marriage, but who will date a married man. There's another phenomenon in the community. And y'all see this. You saw it in high school. You saw it in college. You see it today. The alpha males always have a flock of women around them and interested in them. And guess what? A lot of these sisters who say they don't want to be part of a plural relationship. Mm -hmm. are always part of that queendom around that alpha male. Because at the end of the day, if he got swag and she's attracted, she's not letting another woman keep her from entertaining him. Mm. You've seen this, you know this. This is the reality. It's the reality in the animal kingdom. It's the reality in the man kingdom. The alpha males always attract the women and those women never stop their pursuit because he's in a relationship. Mm. They just will never publicly admit it. Mm. So listen, I want y'all to come back here, Ronda. We go ahead and drop that joint. Oh yeah, we got some people in, the, in in there now. So let's go ahead. We got some people that's coming backstage. I want y'all to come uh, come on back here. Almost twenty five hundred people in the chat live right now. So it's going crazy. We this got, is a class instant classic episode with Dr. Umar Johnson right it's now. It's an instant classic and episode. See, you got sisters in the chat, right? One beautiful sister says, "I'd rather be single." She's being dishonest. If you are not yet at retirement age. You're not thinking about being single. That's a lie. And so when we talk about transparency, because that's another thing in a relationship, you got to be transparent. And another reason our relationships fail, we're not transparent. We are hiding, sneaking, doing all kinds of stuff. Why don't your wife know about this? Why don't your husband know about this? You got a whole nother bank account. He don't know. You have lunch with your baby mom every Friday. She don't know. If the relationship doesn't have transparency, it's based on lies. And I would I would dare say at least 50% of the relationships in our community are not transparent. They're based mm. on lies. Everybody's holding out on something. So mm. much so that if you really saw everything they got going on in their life that you didn't know about, you might leave them. We do not respect the sanctity of black on black love anymore. We treat it like any other game, any other scheme, or any other business <clears throat> racket we trying to run. And we got to put back the spirituality in black on black love. For me, I don't believe we need to be coming together, having babies, or getting married unless we're creating a family that's going to contribute in some significant way to the liberation of African people. We not birthing no babies unless we birthing kings and queens who want to play a role in the liberation struggle for African people. For me, that's the purpose of family. You understand? Right. We, we doing this for the people. Everything we do, we doing it so we can leave a legacy for our children and for our people. Getting married just because you think it's the end thing to do. Mm. Getting married just because you want somebody to uh, furnish you with all kinds of expensive <clears> gifts. <throat> I don't think that's a good reason for people to be coming together. Hey, we got, what's it here? We got Fizzy. Fleazy, Fleazy from Black Renaissance Podcast. What's up, my brother? Fleazy from Black Renaissance Podcast, this man. man. got the mic and everything. He got the, bro. You ready, <laughs> man? Look, let me tell you. T tell us, brother, what's your take on this, man? You dating outside your race or what, brother? Never dated outside my race, never dated a white woman, never had sex with a white woman. And I 100% agree with brother Umar Johnson, who states the fact that once a black woman actually lets a white man enter her cave, she is like basically no good to like the black race. Unfortunately, I, I oh definitely agree with that. Too. I'm not going to lie. I am totally for my brother and keep preaching that good word. So, yeah, I'm all for staying like stand with black women, black on black relationships, you know. Fleazy. Well, look, I appreciate you coming up here and giving us your take, brother. Shout out to Fleazy. And I would say this. If the sister did allow the Iceman 
to shoot his ancestors into her vagina. I believe we can get with our queen mothers of traditional African spiritual culture, and maybe we could perform a vaginal exorcism to get that white man's ashe <laughs> out of her room. <laughs> We got, they, got the, they, got the, they got the detox tea. Yes. Yes. And they put some tea, yes. they yes. gotta put some tea some on Some thing. sage, some <laughs> herbs, do some prayers and get his ashe. Because let's be honest, and I want my sisters to hear me on this. Women are not men and are not supposed to be. <clears throat> nor should they try to behave like us. And I see a lot of sisters trying to be serial monogamous like a lot of men are. And it's dangerous to their spiritual and psychological health because whoever a woman lays with, he will leave fingerprints in her vagina. Mm. Not physical, spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. And a reason, a big reason why a lot of our black women are so unhealthy psychologically and so unhappy spiritually is because they have the energy of multiple men swimming in their uterus. Mm. What they could have all used condoms. I'm not talking about his physical ashe. I'm talking about his spiritual ashe. Women keep us in them. Every man she lays with is in her until she conducts a spiritual detox. So, sisters, please don't turn into a serial monogamous. And of course, if you're out there sexing too much, ladies, you're going to end up with a loosey goosey. And the older you get, the harder it is. For that loosey goosey to rebound back to its normal shape and size and tightness. So ladies need to practice a lot more discretion as they age. Uh, who are we gonna bring up on this joint, Matt? You know what? Let's bring the brother. We got Mike in the chat here. Mike, welcome to the stage. Hey. Welcome to Harley Initiated, my brother. Can you hear us? Loud and clear. Mic check, mic check. Get, do me a favor, Mike. Give me your age, your location, and I wanna hear your take on this. Uh 29, uh, California. And Umar's not gonna like me because I believe that you can date who you want to date, just don't be a coon. And, you know, we regard Frederick Douglass with high esteem, and he married a white woman at the end of the day. So I look at a man's actions more so than who he dates. Let me respond to my brother, and I appreciate the dialogue because we still brothers even if we disagree. I want to clarify the Frederick Douglass piece. You're absolutely right. About a decade before his death as an old man, he married a white woman. But let's not forget about Queen Mother Anna Marie Douglas, who he was married to for nearly 50 years, who gave birth to all five of his children, who helped him escape from slavery to freedom and who ran the Underground Railroad in Rochester, New York during his absence. I'm only bringing that up because we talk about the white woman so much that a lot of our children don't know. Frederick Douglass had a dark skinned, chocolate, beautiful, nappy headed wife. So I want to make sure Anna Marie Douglas gets her due. Now, to your question, to your point that we can marry who we want and not be a coon. How is not building a family with a black woman? How can you be exempt from cooning if you do not build family with black woman? So by your own rhetoric, it's okay if we marry a white woman as long as we marry a black woman first. No, you should not be marrying a white woman at all. If the salvation right. of the African people rests on the shoulders of the African family, do we not have an obligation to be with our own women? Interesting. And and I believe and that you exclusively date argument? sisters, right? Yes. And what about the wealth yeah. argument? Women, on average, outlive their husbands. So when we transition, if we marry the snow bunny, is she going to use any of your wealth to empower the black community after you're gone, i.e. Kobe Bryant, i.e. Marvelous Marvin Hagler? You, you know, all these great black men who married these white women. James Earl Jones is an elder. We're not expecting him to go anywhere anytime soon. Sydney, is Sidney Poitier still with us or did he? I'm not I, sure. I Can somebody I'm gonna look that up? Look, look that up, up, please. I think I don't want to speak it if it's not correct. We don't want to force no elders into the land of right. the ancestors not, yeah. before their time. Too soon. Well, the only reason I, I mentioned that I judge a man by his actions is because he passed. You, Sydney Portier yeah. Yeah. Passed, passed away, away. married to a white woman. He was a very wealthy man. That yeah. white woman got all the Sydney Portier's money. That non-African Latino got all of Kobe Bryant's money. That white woman got all the marvelous Marvin Hagler's money. This is wealth that we need to empower the black community and build institutions. How are you not a sellout if you're giving white people 
that type of wealth when they've already stolen enough from us? How could you find a white woman who could ever understand you as well as a sister? Yeah. Well, the only reason why I mentioned people's actions is because you yourself exclusively date black, yet you're one of the biggest scammers in our community. It's been 12 years. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 why you do me like that? Why you do me like that, bro? Oh, man. Oh, Mike, we, 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 we was going oh, good until Michael went a little left. Mike, come Mike, on, man. Oh, man. man. I, I thought the brother was a good brother. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And, and you know, I want to actually want to talk about some of the stuff that we've been hitting here because. No problem. No problem. Go right ahead. We, we got. Go right ahead. Excuse me, Negro. I'm not here to be friendly to nobody. I am here to wake up African people. If you have a problem with anything that I say, hop off the live right now. This is my page, my platform, my channel, my message. If you don't like it, get off the page. If you want to debate me, $50,000 for the debate. But for Uncle Shannon, I'm going to do it for free. 